Hi guys, in this video we will be looking at fiscal policy, where does fiscal policy come from, functions of fiscal policy, and then we'll be finishing off with a summary. So we know that fiscal policy involves the use of government spending and taxation to influence the level of aggregate demand in the economy. So we know that there are two tools to fiscal policy, and they are taxes, so the government will tax people on their income, on their profits, etc., to build up a tax revenue, and the tax revenue funds the government spending. So we can see how the two things interlink and are also dependent on each other. And the government will use fiscal policy to influence AD, or aggregate demand, in the economy. And the government is able to use fiscal policy in many different ways. So the first one that we will consider is either an increase or a decrease in the tax. So suppose that initially the tax level was 20% and then there is an increase to 35%, then this is seen as a tax rate increase. Then we can consider the other example where we decrease tax from say 40% down to 25%. And this is known as a decrease in the tax rate. Now one other way that the government can use taxes is through the introduction of new taxes. Now it's certainly not very common, but a new tax is an example of how the government have introduced a 5p tax on plastic bags, so that is an example of a new tax to affect aggregate demand. Now the other way that they can use fiscal policy is through increasing or decreasing government spending. So if they increase government spending, they might end up borrowing more to increase our government spending. Or the government may choose to decrease government spending by cutting funding to government services, such as healthcare and education. Governments can also change either their taxes or government spending, or they can change both at the same time. So they have an option to either change one or the other, or they have the option to change both. Okay, so now let's move on to understanding where fiscal policy comes from. And fiscal policy was originally advocated for by John Maynard Keynes during the Great Depression. So John Maynard Keynes was a British economist whose ideas changed the theory and practice of macroeconomics and the policies used by the government. And during the Great Depression, which was during the 1930s, that worldwide recession sort of started in the US after Wall Street crash, and then that expanded out towards the rest of the global economy. And John Maynard Keynes, he was a fiscalist, so he very much believed in that times where there is depression or a recession in the economy, where the economic cycle is not experiencing a boom and is perhaps on the downturn, the government should intervene. So he believed that the government should step in and start increasing spending to try and stimulate the economy back up. And Keynesian policies were used to stabilise economic cycles during the 50s and the 60s. So it was Keynesian style policies or Keynesian theme policies that led to that recovery in the 50s and the 60s. And they used the economic cycle to understand where they were on the cycle and to know how much they really needed to step in. And then we saw a change in approach to solving our economic downturns, where the economic cycle was going on a little bit of a downward spiral. However, in the 70s and 80s, we saw a change in approach to stabilizing an economy. So government started preferring to use monetary policy for influencing the economy, and Keynesian policies have since fallen out of favor to a certain degree. So currently right now, a lot of the government policy that has been used to try and stabilize our economic cycle and bring us out of a recession has been monetary policy focused. However, we have seen some fiscal policies that were employed during the financial crisis. So during the recession, there was a worldwide resurgence of interest in Keynesian policies during the financial crisis, as many governments needed to intervene heavily to save their economy. So remember the financial crisis was in 2007 and 2008 and it's considered to have been the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. So it was actually deeper. So our GDP fell by more following the financial crisis than it did the Great Depression. However, the one difference has been that our response to policy and our understanding of macroeconomic policy was, means that economists have been able to heal the wound faster than before. So within the space of 10 years, we have reached the same levels that we were in terms of economics performance before the financial crisis. So after 10 years, we've returned to the same point. 
long process, definitely not going to deny that, but it's recovered. And then the Great Depression, that took decades to come back from, so the response has been better. Okay, so what are some of the fiscal policies that have been enacted by the government during the financial crisis? Well, one has been to increase spending on benefits, and that helped people out during times of unemployment. Then there have been VAT and income tax cuts. So, for example, we've seen the tax threshold or the personal allowance of tax rise over the years slowly. And then there's also been occasions where the VAT has been cut from 20% down. There's also been increased investment by the government into the economy. And also the government has spent a lot of money on bailouts to the banks that started to fail. To a certain degree that was necessary because if the banks failed then that meant that they were a financially important institution and that would have crippled the financial industry nationwide. And therefore that's going to have a big impact on the economy more than it's worth. So it was worth bailing out. And there's a couple of other examples of fiscal policies that have been implemented into the government. So one that stands out to me is how the government fixed the price of petrol in the economy. And that tends towards helping out some people in the economy in terms of having very high costs to petrol. So if petrol is a cost to a firm that's producing, then reducing their costs means they can increase their supply, which reduces the price in the market. So there's a deflationary pressure on the price level which is good and also increased quantity that boosts up gdp could also boost up consumption because the price is lower too so there's lots of benefits that we have from fiscal policy even though it's not so popular anymore it definitely still occurs okay so now let's move on to the functions of fiscal policy and there are three main functions that we are going to think about and they are stimulating growth and this is something that Keynes argued for heavily maintaining inflation so they're looking to maintain the level of inflation and finally, to stabilize the economy. So let's explore these. So firstly, a government is going to wish to stimulate economic growth through a recession. So remember, AD includes government spending. And if AD is linked to our GDP calculation, then if we increase government spending, we will increase AD. And therefore, we will increase our economic growth. Now, the government may also use fiscal policy to maintain a low level of inflation. So suppose that inflation is starting to creep up, then the government can increase tax rates. And that means that consumption will fall and therefore prices will because demand falls. And then the final one is government spending levels. So the government might reduce their spending to reduce their inflationary pressure on the price level in the economy. And remember that the UK has a target inflation rate of 2%. Now that responsibility of maintaining that rate is given to the Bank of England in the UK. However, the government can play a role in that too. Finally, a government may wish to stabilise economic growth to avoid extreme boons and bust cycles. So what can happen in an economy when there is an extreme boom? This can often be followed by an extreme recession or an extreme bust. And this is undesirable for an economy because we want a very stable, smooth, trending growth. So although it might sound like a really good news story that the economy is now growing at 8.5%, an economy doesn't necessarily want this and neither does a government because it makes things very variable and not so stable. So we want a very smooth growth. So aim like one5 percent 2%. That's a very good sign for us. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're looking for an amazing A-level economics resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level economics a walk in the park.